All right. Um, so we've got five cos theta. Five cos theta minus sixteen plus three cos theta. We're going to write it in the form r sine theta somewhere. And we need this as as a, an a cos theta plus b sine theta thing, don't we? Before we do anything else. So our first move with this is to, to unpick this cos theta minus 60. Now from the formula booklet, cos theta minus 60 is cos theta cos 60 plus sine theta sine 60. And it's multiplied by 5, so we've still got the 5 in there. Now cos 60 is a half. So we've got, if we add up the cos thetas, we've got 5 <coughs> times a half plus another 3. So that's 2 and a half plus 3, so that's 5 and a half, so that's 11 over 2 cos theta. And sine 60 is root 3 over 2. So we've got 5 root 3 over 2 sine theta in there. And that lot is supposed to be equal to r sine theta plus alpha. And r sine theta plus alpha is r sine theta cos alpha plus r cos theta sine alpha. So remember, we now match up the bits on this. We've got cos theta there, and cos theta is over there. And we've got them the wrong way around, haven't we? We've got sine theta there, and sine theta is there. So if we compare the cos thetas, we have that r sine alpha is 11 over 2, and r cos alpha is 5 root 3 over 2. We sort this out now by squaring and adding. So r squared is 11 over 2 squared plus 5 root 3 over 2 squared. Which is, what's that, 44 plus um, another amount, um, 75, so that's something. Anyway, it comes out as 7. Yeah, that, that does add up to 1, oh, I can't remember what it does, that's 7, which is square root 2. Yeah, it adds up to 49, yeah, yeah thanks. We've got the divided by 4 as well, haven't we? So, um, so we, we get 7 from that. Um, the angle, if you then use 7 in this, so sine alpha is 11 over 14, and cos alpha is 5 root 3 over 14, inverse sine, inverse cos of that, so you get 51.8. Um, it did say write in the form, so you have to finish this off by writing in the form. 7 sine theta plus 51.8, and there's your four marks. Now, it then says, this was a little bit sneaky, wasn't it? Hence, give details of the transformations needed to transform the curve to the curve y equals sine theta. Notice what we've done here. We kind of, we're doing the transformation backwards. We're going from 7 sine theta plus 51.8 to sine theta. It's the wrong way around. We normally go from sine theta to our transformed shape, we're going backwards. So we've got to remember, we know what those transformations would be going in that direction. We've got to do the inverse of those transformations. So the multiplying by a 7, they're perpendicular, so the order doesn't matter. The multiplying by a 7, that would be stretching, it's going back to 7 in the y direction. But it's the other way around, isn't it? Because we're undoing that. So it's a stretch. Scale factor one seventh in the y direction, parallel to the y axis. That's the first one. Well, it doesn't matter what job, which order we do this. And the second word, so important that we get this word right. It's not a move, it's not a transformation, it's a translation. And it would now, this is the confusing one, isn't it? Because if we were going from sine theta to that, a plus 51.8 would move us 51.8 in the negative direction. We're undoing that though, aren't we? 
So that must move us 51.8 in the positive direction. 51.8 degrees uh, in the positive direction. Parallel to the x-axis. You got one mark for saying a stretch and a translation. And then the other two marks were for describing each of them correctly. But if you didn't get both of those words correct, then you lost the method mark and you lost the, the A mark. So a, a stretch and a shift could score a maximum of one out of three. However, accurately, they're the Is it easier Is it what? If you get the mark, if you use the wrong number, like the number you found. It, it, it relates to have, if you have things clearly stated, then whatever your 7 and your 51.8 are. I'll have a look at the jacks in there. Right, the very last bit says find the smallest positive value of beta satisfying this equation. This, this was pretty horrible, wasn't it? So, so what we're doing with this now. We've got 5 cos 1 third beta minus 40. Let's write this out. So we've got 5. Yeah. 5 cos, what is it? Uh, a third beta minus 40. this relates to what we started with in the question. It, it must do, because after it said part two, Ben, after it said part two, it said hence. So it must relate to that first bit. Um, so that first bit was a five cos theta minus 60. Plus three cos theta. And that, that we got as being equal to 7 sine theta plus 51.8. So we've got to compare the, the black line and the red line there, haven't we? And I think it's, it's the second part that the key is here. Look, if theta must be equal to 1 third beta plus 20. That's, that's how it matches up, isn't it? Because... One third beta plus twenty. Uh, uh, theta minus sixty would give us one third beta minus forty, wouldn't it? It does. It matches up in both places to be the same thing. Which means that the question that we are actually trying to solve is replacing theta with one third beta plus twenty in this thing here. So actually, we're trying to solve seven <laughs> sine. One third of beta plus twenty plus fifty-one point eight equals three. Can you see what we've done there? We've used the fact that the thing that matches up here is theta equals one third beta plus twenty. So I'm replacing that in here. Um, theta equals one third beta plus twenty to get the angle that I want. All right. Which not many people spotted. But Ben spotted. Well, I'm Ben. And, and Joe spotted as well. Okay, thanks, Joe. Right. So now we've got to solve this for beta. So this says that sine of one third beta plus seventy one point eight now is equal to three sevenths. And if we do inverse sine of that, we get twenty five point three seven seven. moment we spot <coughs> that we are looking in this question for the smallest positive value of beta. And look what would happen if we unpicked this equation here. Beta would not be positive at all, it would be negative. 
we take away 71.8 and get a negative amount out of that. So we actually need the next value that we would get from this in order to make sure we can end up with a positive amount. <laughs> So, so we go to the graph diagram, or to yeah. the cast diagram. If we're doing it with the cast diagram, we've just written 25.7377 uh, there, so it would be over here. If you're, if you're a graph person, then you're using the symmetry, you're saying there is 180, there's 25.377. So we're going to take it away from 180 to get the other value that we want that's across there. And it gives us 154.623. That value is absolutely fine. That value we can afford to subtract 71.8 from. We don't, we don't care about this minus value anymore. We're going to subtract it from that and get 82.8. And now we're going to multiply that answer by 3 to get 248.508 to that. So um, they accepted 248 or 249 or 248.5 as the final answer, or even the greater accuracy of that. There we go. It, it doesn't look that bad, actually, when you see it like that, does it? Um, that was a really tough question. Very few people have got that. And that's call three maths. Ooh.